So last week's cold has blown away with this southerly wind and we're back into 10, 11, 12 degrees. Um, some bees are flying now, they are able to poop, so pollen sub that went on last week hopefully is being consumed. But what I'm doing here is making up a few pallets in the workshop because I've got some spare uh, timber that I'm using that is uh, not going to waste, but it's come to my come to the conclusion that that really trying to constantly constantly be on the lookout for pallets is a real pain, and I never really have enough. So it, it's it, to me, it's turning out to be easier just to make make some up. Now these are the ones that um, I've made this morning. They're pretty rough and ready, but at the end of the day, they're exactly what I need. Okay, um, they support two hives. I don't use them for have to for forklifting, but I'll show you what happens when I put hives on them. These are two bases that I'll put on, and you'll see exactly how they fit. So um, I've got these two on here. That's what they're like when the bases are on, basically. So two hives on, nice little bit of space in the middle, and they sit on them really nicely, slightly overhang, which is what I want each end. And that's all you need. And I have two tires underneath there. So the tires protect the pallet from humidity and the moisture. And they also seem to screen away a little bit of vibration. If you walk past, or if you're working nearby, the, the tires absorb that a little bit. And yes, the tires do get water. And I know other people have said to me they couldn't have that where they are because of a problem with mosquitoes. But it's not something that never seems to be a re really be a problem for us. And uh, I just find that this is going to be the way forward because the thing is, I need to know I've got materials. I can't be hanging on, waiting, going, oh, I must pick some up. I must pick some up. We have time in the winter to do these things if it's scheduled time, if we organize ourselves. So um, that's what I've been doing. I've made these lot up, as I just showed you, but I'm going to get a load more material. We can buy the wood fairly cheaply, and most of the wood we can buy to make these is already treated, and the pallets isn't. Yeah, I know the screws are a little bit expensive. The great little screws, they have a round head, so they're absolutely perfect for this, and they really clamp everything together well. So I think it's, it's more professional this way. You, you've got everything standardized, and if you ever want to use a pallet, truck uh, in other words a forklift wherever you need them you've got your hives on pallets already to use it just makes things easier you know so um the snow we had last week has gone just Dis disappeared over two nights over two days we had a change in weather we went from easterly to a south now southwesterly and we're drawing back in the um the southwesters and we've got bees flying if you wanted to know these are my two AZ hives that um, have survived the winter quite well. There's not a lot of activity, but there's a nice steady stream. It's not that warm today, so the bees are flying a little bit. They're bringing in pollen. And uh, I've got obviously the two of these AZ hives are here now. So uh, it's nice to have them here. I'm going to be using them for cut comb this summer and, and spring as well. So I've got extra frames ready for them. I'm going to do a couple of videos on this. But obviously they don't fit in that well with the honey production unless I do something like cut comb with them. So I'm going to do that so I can keep the colonies strong. They're doing their house cleaning. There's some a little bit of pollen coming in there. You're dead bee. We've got a steady stream though. So these are looking quite good. That bee is just about to be turfed out. Off you go. You're finished with. <laughs> so that's good fun. They're doing their hygienic bit, which is great. Bees are just starting to brood up now. Um, we're, we're seeing that in a lot of colonies. There's a little bit of brood in each one. I haven't been into them much, but from what I have seen, there is a little bit of brood. So um, it's just lovely to have these two colonies here, to be honest. Quite good flights going on there. Another point of uh, thing to mention is we had a uh, pine martin in the workshop. Uh, where the wood store was, but it seems to have got out on its own. I left the roof vent open uh, where we used to blow the steam out when we emptied the wax melter. And um, what happened was it seemed to have fell in one night and then it, it's, been, it's been hiding in some of the panelling and it's gone up into the ceiling void. But we know it's gone out now because today I, I, I put the camera trap down last night again and nothing was seen last night. There's no fresh scat anywhere. And every morning since... Um, for the last five days, we've had 
uh, fresh scat everywhere. So we know that this uh, pine martin, I thought it originally was just a common martin, but it's a pine martin, and I filmed it, as you'll see in the video now. Um, it, it's been pooping everywhere, but there's nothing this morning following me leaving the vent open and a ramp up to it. So I'm pretty sure it went out the night before last. So I'm very pleased and I don't want to kill it. Uh, a lot of people that have been looking this up do actually trap martins because I, I don't know why, but they trap them. Maybe they use them for their fur. But for us here in this particular environment, they're an absolute blessing because they do keep the mice and rats down. They are super, super efficient vermin controllers. They eat mice and rats. We've never seen rats here and now we know why. So this Martin I actually saw on the roof up there when I was up on the top there once getting some uh, materials down. I saw it at the back there and uh, I know I knew it was a ram, but we didn't realize how what it actually was until it, it fell in one night. And then we saw it on the on our security cameras and uh, and also I put my little camera trap out to confirm it when it was drinking some water. But it's just a bit of interest. It's lovely that we've got those kind of things uh, at, around the workshop. It's a pretty wild area we are. I can just show you here. We're right in the middle of um, uh, the Val de Lagunar, which is where we keep a lot of our apiaries. And it's completely wild. It's huge swathes of farmland and valley. So really we're open here to anything turning up. And it's nice to see what is around. And, you know, we, we kind of support everything that's around. I'm putting a barn owl box up. I've got a barn owl box going up just up there at the back. But I've now realized that I've got to make sure that barn owl box is, is um, reinforced from the outside because if that um, uh, martin, that uh, pine martin, could sense there was barn owl chicks in the box, which there's no doubt there will be, it will, it will wreck the box because the problem is I'm putting the box on top of the, the honey house but the exit is outside and it's nothing around for the bar for the martin to climb up to get to the box which is great but on the inside it could access it through the box if it gnawed the wood so i've got to be really careful about that so it's it's like you want to do the best you can but you've got to put um you don't want to see your barn owl chicks slaughtered on you know in the in the first two or three weeks of them being tiny before they can start flying and well there's a long time before they can start flying so um Something else to consider, I've got to do, but um, we're getting ahead of all the work. As I say, all the frames are done. We're doing some more work at the back of the building, bringing up the gravel level, and we're putting a concrete plinth in to, to reduce, to make sure the damp course stays uh, as it should do. Um, all little maintenance jobs, and we've got to get back and cut this lot back. That's all got to be hacked back before the season starts, because it really needs a bit of work doing to it. Uh, that's a gardening job for me, so I'll be getting stuck into that. Um, we're really still, uh, we've got what, how many days now, how many weeks, probably three or four weeks until, uh, it really kicks off. If this weather stays mild, we'll be into better weather, pretty, into better flying weather pretty soon. So the bees are flying, but only just, they're only just kind of starting to get back to a routine after the cold snap we had. And it was amazing. It was, it was really as winter should be, um, that period of, being completely shut down and then they did and all the colonies now are getting back to um, re or moving that honey around in the colony to, to closer so they used up what they had when it was cold and now they're they're re-centralizing their stores and now they're carrying on uh, getting on with bringing in some pollen and I think some brood rearing so uh, which is what we'd expect now the things are starting to kick up now you know the light levels are getting longer we've got an extra hour or two each day um, the days increase hugely now and the clocks will go back I think the end of the end of March so we uh, sorry they go forward so we lose an hour but it just shows you how much the days change so anyway I'm going to get all these um, pallets uh, treated now get these done today out the way and then they'll, they'll be dry and we can get them out to the apiaries and change ones that are broken and uh Keep renewing things, keep on top of things. That's what you really need to do. Is that we'll be doing apiary visits soon just to purely clear the apiary and check any pallets that are broken. Obviously, check the apiary is good and check the bees are looking okay, but not really get into the hives. Just It'll be just to more of a maintenance check and a, and a check where you're going with the mower. And some of these apiaries I can spend half a day in. There's like, there's one I've got that's got ruts in that need filling. Um, and also uh, I'll need to move a bit of soil in there as well as cut back some gorse and cut back brambles. It's just constant maintenance and that's what it really comes down to. That's what you've got to do. So um, until then, I'll uh, catch you again soon. Bye for now.